Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. So God wants to take people that have really been messed with and messed around and hurt and used and abused and heal them. But he doesn't want to heal us just so we can sit around somewhere and feel good. He wants us to then learn to give to other people what he has given to us. Is anybody home in the house this morning? To bear fruit, good fruit, there's a little something that has to happen. And it's called pruning. <laughs> pruning. Now, some crazy wild branches just need a little, they just need a little clip. If you don't know what pruning is, it means that when a tree starts to get It's going this way, and then all of a sudden, some branch wants to go that way. It can ruin the looks of the whole thing. So you prune those off. It, pruning takes away dead stuff, or stuff that's going in the wrong direction. And the Bible says that he's the vine, we're the branches, that every branch in him that does not bear fruit He prunes, takes away, cuts off. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it bears richer and more excellent fruit. So it seems to me like the pruning thing is a fact of life. We can't get away from it. You're pruned if you don't bear fruit. And if you do bear fruit, God says, oh good, I've got somebody I can work with. We're going to have them bear more fruit. So sometimes as God's dealing with us, it just takes a little a little adjustment, but for some of us, <laughs> there's a bigger job that has to be done. Come on now. <laughs> you guys. you need to get a pair of these and just put them on the wall somewhere. <laughs> My husband had a tree in our front yard pruned back one time. I mean, I knew, I, you know, I knew it needed to be done, but when I came home from work, I was so mad when I saw that tree <laughs> because it just was down to almost nothing. Come on, do you feel like you've been cut down to almost nothing? And he said, just be patient. My husband has a lot of that. I don't have as much of it as he does. Just be patient and you'll see next year. Well, I didn't want a pretty tree next year. I wanted a pretty tree right now. Now, how many of you know that's our problem? We don't want anything next year or in five years. We want it right now. Well, God doesn't work that way. Sometimes he prunes us back. Like for example, they say, like say a peach tree, a good farmer or a peach orchard grower If they're really good, the first year the tree bears a little tiny fruit, they go and pluck it off. The next year it's a little bit bigger, they pluck that off too. And if they'll be patient and not let it actually bear fruit the first few years, then it will come around and bear fruit like no other tree. Come on, now some of you, are, you're where I'm at. You're, you're with me. You know, when God called me to teach, I thought for sure I'd roll out of bed the next morning and go to the world. <laughs> I felt like God said, you're going to go all over the world and teach my word. Well, I didn't know 
I didn't know that meant like years from now. See, a lot of us, God has called us to do something, but we don't want to settle down and let him prepare us. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. We don't want to settle down and let him prepare us for the thing he's called us to do. You know, it's interesting. David was anointed to be king 20 years before he wore the crown. Hello? 20 years before he wore the crown. When God puts something in your heart, you see the end of it. You see it like, wow! But it's going to start out like a little tiny fuzzy peach popping out on a tree, and God's going to come along and pull that baby off and say, not yet. Well, sure enough, next year, we had a gorgeous tree in the front yard. And God loves us so much that he will kick things out from under us that have become props to us. <laughs> like maybe when you're a baby Christian, God will give you a couple of just awesome Christian friends that just keep you propped up all the time. I mean, every time you have a bad day, they're right there to tell you how awesome you are and to prophesy your great future. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about. And then, really what's happening is you're leaning on them too much and not leaning on God enough. And so, he arranges for them to no longer be in your life. And I don't know, they may even do something that hurts you. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> in the process of them keeping you propped up, you got to thinking that they were just these, oh, perfect, amazing people that would never hurt you. Hey, listen, I know, because I've been through all this. I got some stories I could tell you that would make the hair stand up on the, your head if it's not already doing it. I mean, when I had my little women's Bible group at the church that I was at, and I had my little Thursday morning meeting, and I had my little leadership team, and there were 12 ladies, and I just thought they all just loved me. They, you know, they just love me. They're for me. They'll back me up. And, you know, a time came when one of them decided that she wanted my job. She felt like God told her that she should be doing the teaching instead of me. And she started talking to a bunch of the others. Before you know it, they were all finding fault with me and ended up gossiping about me and telling some lies and turned against me. And it was one of the hardest things that I have ever, ever, ever gone through in my life. But can I tell you something? If I wouldn't have gone through that, I wouldn't be here today. You know why? Because I trusted them too much. I had too much of my confidence in them. And God loves you enough. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm getting ready to say. But God loves you enough that he will let something happen in your life that will hurt you for a period of time because it's intended to make you a better person in the long run. Because here's what would have happened. God was getting ready to promote me to the next level of my ministry because he was about to call me out of that church to start doing what I'm doing now. And I started on a much, 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 much smaller scale. And I would have taken all them with us, with me. And the higher the ladder you go, the more damage people that aren't really what they seem to be can do in your life. So you better be thankful that God reveals some of their weaknesses down here instead of waiting until you get up here. Amen? It took me three years to get over that. It hurt me so bad. But I'll tell you what, 
I got used to being by myself and going to God for what I needed, putting my trust in Him, and I learned some wisdom about getting too entrenched with people. Come on, we need people. People are wonderful. We need our friends, but there's a trust that belongs only to God. And when you start giving it to somebody else, it's going to come back and bite you. There's a beautiful few scriptures in Isaiah 61, the first three verses, that carried me through many, many, many very difficult years. And I'd just like to take the time for us to read them because we get into this fruit-bearing thing again here. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to the prisoners. Well, I was one of those brokenhearted people, and I'm sure many of you are like that too. And Jesus came just for people like me and like you. He came to declare the favorable year of the Lord, the day of the vengeance and the retribution of our God. Don't you love that? God is your vindicator. Come on. God is your vindicator. And when anybody has treated you wrong, if you will treat them right, oh Lord, oh help me Jesus. Come on. Do you know how hard it is to be nice to somebody that you know has been talking about you behind your back? That's when I need those big pruning shears. <laughs> I had something happen one time that just makes a good point. Somebody that we did business with, we actually gave a lot of business to them, was an outside company, not somebody that worked for us, but they worked with us a lot. Somebody told me that they were in a restaurant at a booth and these people that we did business with were sitting right behind them and they were just raking me over the coals. I mean, just, she's this and she's that and she's not this and she's not that. Well, I got my plan. <laughs> well, they will lose our business starting tomorrow. And I'm going to tell them this, and I'm going to tell them that, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm. And God interrupted me. He said, no, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to pray for them and send them a gift. Well, honestly, and I'm telling you the truth, I so much wanted to send them an anonymous copy of my book, Me and My Big Mouth. <laughs> you don't know how bad I wanted to do that. And so I decided, I could feel the minute that I said yes to God, I could feel joy. Now, I mean, I know that sounds stupid, but when you do the right thing, you always get joy from it. Even if it's hard, it always brings you joy. So, I wrote them a thank you note, tell them how much we appreciated doing business with them over the years and, you know, looked forward to a great future together and sent them some gift certificates to go out and eat lunch. I so badly wanted to send them gift certificates to the restaurant where they were talking about me. I, my flesh was looking for any little tiny way to let them know that I knew.
Well, if I'm going to be this good, I want them to know that I know what they did and that I'm being nice anyway. But no, God would have none of it. I had to just do what he told me to do. But here's the thing. Now, look at me when I tell you this. The moment that I did that, I was free. When you do that, people can't hurt you anymore. Because you see the secret that's found in Romans 12, 21, we overcome evil with good. The way to overcome evil is to kill it with good. You've heard the phrase, kill them with kindness. He came to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. And then it goes on to say that they might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Fruit bearing trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. So God wants to take people that have really been messed with and messed around and hurt and used and abused and heal them. But he doesn't want to heal us just so we can sit around somewhere and feel good. He wants us to then learn to give to other people what he has given to us. Is anybody home in the house this morning? Don't despise the chastisement of God. Ask God to deal with you. I dare you to ask God to prune you. If you want, you can ask him to start with the little ones. How about just a little snip here and there, Lord? Not, not any of that big stuff. How many of you know what I mean when I say God has to cut the dead things out of our life? Okay, well, a lot of this busy stuff, you're busy with dead stuff. <laughs> you're putting your time into stuff that has no life in it. Come on. Sitting at the lunch table with people that you work with and listening to them crab and complain about the business place and gossip about everybody, you're just, you're putting your time into something dead. And God wants you to be done with dead stuff. He wants you to get with the living and live for him, glorify him. God's got something wonderful that he wants to do in all of our lives but we've got to get rooted in him. We don't get healed just to be healed. We get healed so we can help other people. Listen, I know that what I'm doing makes the devil so mad he can hardly stand it. If you think the enemy comes after you, you ought to try something like this. Because God has healed my life. And he, he has done amazing things in me. And I believe the only way that I can get the devil back for what he did to me in my childhood is to help as many people as I can possibly help. So instead of sitting around and being bitter the rest of your life because you got a bad start, it's not so important how you get started, it's how you finish. Amen. Amen? And I'm here to tell you, no matter what you don't have, you do have God. And as long as you have him on your side, you and God together can defeat anything in your life. Anything. God has a good plan for every single one of you. Not one person is in, is in a pit so deep that God can't reach down in it and lift you out. 
Nobody has sinned so much that they can't be forgiven. I want you to listen to me today. I'm not just preaching to everybody else here. Jesus is talking to you this morning. And he wants you to know that he's the God of fresh starts and the God of new beginnings. Let go of everything that lies behind and start brand new today. This is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Don't spend today being depressed about yesterday. Amen? Be a fruit-bearing tree of righteousness. Make a decision today that you're going to start praying some different kind of prayers, not just God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I need you to do this, you know. No, pray for God to show you somebody that you can be a blessing to today. You can start at our lunch break. Maybe you'll see somebody that looks a little down or use a little discernment. Maybe, maybe there's, there'll be somebody that you'll notice that you could go and just encourage them, lift them up. Maybe you could buy somebody a book. Go out and buy four or five books and just walk around and look for people to give them to. <laughs> well, what are you laughing for? I mean it. You know, we had one man that, and he actually still, he works on the team now, but he used to, he used to come to our meetings and he'd show up at every meeting and all he did was buy resources and then walk around and give them to people. And he wore a long trench coat and sometimes he'd kind of, he'd kind of scare people, people like, uh, and you know, there are so many things that you can do other than just sit around and feel sorry for yourself all day. So many ways, little ways that you can be a blessing to people. It may involve money, but it may not involve money. Let me tell you something, no matter how bad you're hurting, there's somebody else in this room today that's hurting worse than you are. I'll tell you what God wants to say to you today, something he said to me one time, Joyce, you tend to my business and I'll tend to yours. Can I give you that word today? You tend to God's business and let him take care of yours. Amen? God, show me who I can help today. Help me walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Show me what I can do to serve you. Deal with me, Jesus. Get out your pruning shears and make me the way you want me to be not the way I want to be. Finally, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, do not despise the chastisement of God. We're to love it when God deals with us. It takes a little bit to get there, but I'll tell you right now, when I feel God's conviction in my life, when he lets me know that he doesn't like the way I'm doing something, I am so grateful now that God loves me so much that he will not leave me alone in my mess. Amen. So when God puts his finger on something in your life, don't murmur, thank him. Thank you, God, that you love me enough to call my attention to this. Now I'm trusting you to help me overcome it. Well, when we're right in the middle of something that's very difficult, it's not always easy to trust God or to keep bearing good fruit. Sometimes we just want to withdraw and hide and just sit somewhere and feel sorry for ourselves. But remember, it's not in our own strength that we get through challenges. It's by completely depending on the Holy Spirit. That's the thing that makes the difference. And it's very important to continue doing good even when you're in the midst of having difficulties. The Bible says in, in Psalms uh, 37, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. And I love that. I think that's very important.
dan 10 miljoen gevangenen zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory here. Prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen en Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for a third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here, so they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. Here you go. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld. En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor hun leven met Jezus gekozen. Faith always opens a door for God to work. Every time that you pray for someone else and you really pray in faith, it opens a door for God to try to do something in their life. Meer uitdagende gedachten vind je op het Joyce Meyer YouTube kanaal. Het bekijken waard.